in this video we are going to be starting on our actual menu so whereas before on like the survival series I went through and I started doing all the game code and stuff like that from the start I'm going to be backtracking and doing this a different route so what we're going to be doing is kind of using World of Wars menu kind of as a baseline so upon opening the game for the solo slash co-op or Nazi zombies we see just kind of a basic screen with your different options. So as of now, we're not implementing any sort of multiplayer team versus, you know, player versus player stuff. So we're gonna be leaving a few settings out. We don't need to have our friends since we're gonna be using Steam. And same thing for online profile mods and credits. So we're gonna have solo, cooperative, options, and quit. Now, when we go to solo, we're going to have it be kind of like this screen here where we choose what map we want to play. So I want to have probably two or three example maps by the time the menu's finished. And depending on the one that you select, it's going to be the one that you load. When you go to cooperative, we're going to have these kind of settings here. We're not really going to bother with LAN because I don't really think that's going to be something that we should bother doing but if we do it'll just be a simple little checkbox when you actually go to host the server but we're going to have find game and host online come right here to find game fortunately oh there actually is a couple servers you can see just the server name that the player wants the map that they're on the amount of players uh, we're not going to have the type since we already know we're just doing nazi zombies for this list not sure what that is or that i think that means internet and we're going to have the ping. So we we'll come over here to host. You can see here we have our little uh, player list that will gradually fill up. We have our lobby chat. Hopefully no one joins while I'm doing this. And we have our game set up. Uh, I'm just going to give it a password just for now. And our game set up. So for example, we're going to have our map list with a little scroll box as well as the image which is going to display up here above that. We're gonna have a couple small settings such as the maximum amount of players. So we can change this to be greater than four if we wanted to, something along those lines, kind of based on what we want. We, I don't think we're gonna bother doing a password, but we might, like I said, I'm not really sure how far we're gonna go with this. And just a simple server name. So, we can go ahead and get started. I want to start up with this menu here and use this as a kind of a little reference. So let's begin. I want to make a new section or a new folder here under content. I want to call it maps. Now inside of maps, I want to make a new folder for main menu. And inside of that, we're going to create a new level menu level. So what we're going to do as an example, I'm going to start probably on, yeah, we're just going to start the menu, but for an example, when we go to do the lobby, we'll click cooperative and then host online. We're going to have a separate level just for this. And when we go to that level, that's what's going to be creating the online session. So when we create the online session, we're going to be traveling to this level here that has all the information, a custom game mode, and all that kind of stuff set up. And all that kind of stuff is going to help us list like the player list and that sort of thing. And just make it a little bit easier to kind of separate things since the lobby itself is going to be separate from the main menu just because from the main menu we can do everything we want with the exception of kind of the kind of the lobby so to say like we just kind of want to keep well personally I want to keep that a little bit separate so now we need a let's go ahead and actually open the main menu level we're going to create a new user interface widget blueprint I'm going to call this one main menu widget okay. let's just index well w underscore main menu so we can indicate that it's a widget and in the main menu level, we're going to go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. 
remove the event tick. And on begin play, we're going to create the widget, add it to our viewport, and show our mouse as well as disable our input. Well, set our input mode to be for the UI only. So the way we can do that is simply we're going to do the input and the mouse real quick. We do get player controller. We're going to do search for show mouse. We're going to, it's going to be set show mouse cursor. We're going to set that to true. And we're also going to set the input mode to UI only. Now from here, we can create widget. It's going to be the widget main menu. And we're going to add it to the viewport. Compile and save. Then we can close. So now we can open up the main menu widget. So we'll read it with a blank widget. The only thing that's in it is a canvas panel here. So here we want to figure out a way to make a list. And why are you deciding to do this now? Give it five more seconds. And just going to close it and relaunch. So we need a, some sort of list here. So we can kind of do it the way that they're doing. So I want to have a background as well as we're going to have these different buttons. And we're going to do, store these in a vertical box. So in the canvas panel, we're going to have just a simple background. Does this change? Yeah, the background changes for what you select. So we might go that route. That wouldn't be too hard. So let's go back to the main menu widget. We're going to add a image into the canvas panel. Go to anchors. And we're going to fill it with this selection down here. Then we can just set offset right and offset bottom. When you set them back to default, they're not zero. But you can just zero them out and they will fill it. Not exactly sure why that is even a thing. Now I want to, under appearance, color and opacity, going to take the red, green, and blue. We're going to set this to some lower, like 0.1. Let's make it a little darker. That'll be good just for now. At least until we actually add a texture for our background. So we have our quote unquote background. So I want to name this main background or I underscore main background. It's not going to be a variable. And now we need pretty much a, so we know we're going to be switching between widgets. So we're at the main menu, we click on solo, and we would be created with like a map selector. So instead of going through and selecting which things we want to hide slash unhide based on the button that we press to go to a certain spot of the menu, we can use what's called a widget switcher. So under panel, we see widget switcher. We're going to drag that into the canvas panel. And I'm going to set this to be to fill it just like we did our image. And I'm going to give it a name. So WS underscore there. I'm just going to literally call it widget switcher since I don't think we're going to have any more. All right, apparently we can't do that. So I'm just going to call it widget switch, do it a short name. So now we can have multiple sections. So I'll give you an example here in a second. So I want to drag a canvas panel onto the widget switcher. And pretty much what, if you click on the widget switcher, what it does is you'll see active widget index. So right now, this canvas panel, I'll just drag a button out and move it to the center. So the widget switcher is on active index zero. 
If we set it to one, I need to actually make another one real quick. I'll add another canvas panel and add a just a button onto it. Okay. So now if I set it to one, we go to this one that just has a small button. You can see when I click back and forth, we go to from index zero and one. So it's literally going to alternate between it, the children that are inside of it. That's all it's doing. And it's going to make it a lot easier for us to kind of do what we want with it. So I'm going to name this canvas panel CP underscore main. And then I'm going to create some buttons. Drag them into CP main and drag the text onto the button. And I'm going to need a vertical box. Drag that into CP main. Move that up above the button. And for the vertical box, let's do the anchoring of the left side, like so. Give it an offset of zero. Set that. And let's make it a little wider. Let's do 500. And as you can see, there's a little bit of padding between the side for this menu. So I want to just kind of do the same little thing and drag it off by, let's do 160. And reset the offsets back to zero. Okay. So we now have our vertical box. We can take our button and drag it in just like that. So now we need to start actually going through and naming our buttons how we want, as well as the text in them. So we see here we have a first button called solo. So I'll just do this one, B underscore solo. And the text I'm going to set to say solo in it. Now we have the actual text but we need to kind of make it move a little bit to the left. Well, fill in the left side. So the horizontal alignment can be on the left and it'll snap it over. So that'll give us kind of this look to where the text is on the left side of the button. Now we can go ahead and darken out because we don't have any, uh, any elements to really make the buttons look nice at this time. So we're gonna go this route. So if we go to, should be background color, yeah. If we go to background color, we can darken the button. So I'm going to do 0 0.1, and I'm going to set the red, green, and blue to 0, so it's straight black. So now if you see, it's got a little dark spot. I'm going to go to 0 .0 0 0.15, make it a little darker. Yeah, so it shows just a little more. Now, I also want to kind of shrink the top a little bit of the vertical box. So I want to do an offset from the top of, let's just do 80 and 80, keep it even. All right, so now we can continue with the rest of the buttons. So we have our solar button. I want to copy it and paste it back into our vertical box. Call this one B underscore, uh, what did it say? Cooperative. I'm just going to do B underscore coop. Change the text to cooperative. And one thing I'm also going to do for the padding, I want to give it a little bit more padding on the left side. So it's at four. Let's do 10. All right, let's do 30. That's about right. And this will be for when we kind of have, we try to replicate the button where we make it fade just so the button starts over here, the text begins here, and then it trickles out. Just trying to match it a little bit. And as well as I want to give it some padding on the top. So the top I'm going to do, let's do 20. And let's back that down to 15. And we'll call it there. So we have solo cooperative, um, 
We need options. And we need quit. So start renaming B underscore quit, B underscore options. And these should be named already, which they are. I want to give this a little less padding. Go down to 10. Yeah, let's do 5. Yeah, we'll do 5. And we'll probably end up moving these down and out a good bit. Oops. So, for example, I can move the quit all the way down to the bottom, which I kind of want to do. Let's do 500. How big is the widget? That is actually not going to help me. Let's do 800, 700, 750, 710. Good enough. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up just to see roughly what it looks like. And this is what we have so far. So solo, cooperative, options, and quit. I'm going to set the editor to load up our main menu level by default. And same thing with our game. So we're going to go to settings, project settings, map and modes, editor startup is going to be main menu level, and game default map is main menu level. That'll just save us from having to reload it uh, each and every time when we start up the editor. Okay, so we have our options there. Now let's make just a rough layout for solo because I think that's what we're going to start on first. So let's go ahead and make our button events. So I click on solo, on clicked, we're going to add an event. I'm also going to remove this event tick and the pre-construct. Back to the designer, we're going to add a cooperative on click button event. Same thing for options. and quit. All right, so we now have buttons or events bound to each of these buttons. So we have the basic layout for this. I'm going to try to keep the video short, so I'm going to stop it here. And in the next video, we will be working on the widget for the solo option. So once we, well, I'll just see you then.